Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 24th February 2018. I am Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at key commodities, oil and gold, that impact related stocks. We will use technical charts to analyze them. A rising tide lifts all boats. And if the tide goes down, the boats tend to go down along with that. We study the broad market with the same thought in mind. If the market goes up, probably more stocks will go up than go down. We study the broad market using NYAC and NASDAQ market breadth and also the four broad market ETFs technical charts. Broad market is too broad to align edges to our trades. Instead, if we drill down to the industry level and take longs in industries that are strong or shorts in industries that are weak, then we have more edges in our trades favor. This is part of the 360 degrees Q analysis. We study the industry rotation using industry scorecard and heat map and we will do the same thing today. Along the way we may go through some of the trades from our traders forum and certainly as always look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We start our commodity study using oil. We are using the oil ETF USO and looking at it using weekly backdrop template and daily hop on template. Together we call this template at a glance template because it allows us in a few seconds to decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart. In the weekly oil went up for two successive weeks with bullish shape candles. However, the move was not enough to change the backdrop candle color to neutral. It remained magenta that is bearish. In the daily chart, it did give a cyan color candle on Thursday after making a recent low. At that time, price was above the three direction lines yellow, cyan and magenta and white direction line was also below price. However, we will not apply the go with flow trend following long trade setup for multiple reasons. One was that the candle had an upper tail that will prevent us from taking any long trade at the close of Thursday. Another reason is of course that the weekly candle color is not cyan yet. If now oil comes down little bit and goes up again, then it is possible to have a go with flow long trade setup. Alternatively, if oil goes down from here and gives us a magenta color candle in the daily chart, then we will have a go with flow short trade opportunity. 
looking at the weekly bearish candle color and the daily bullish candle color it is not clear to me where oil will go from here we may wait for a more clear signal to take a long or short trade in oil now we are looking at gold using same at a glance template we saw that oil went up but gold came down this week the weekly backdrop candle color turned magenta it was magenta two weeks ago one week ago it turned cyan and now it turned magenta again showing that gold is flip-flopping going up and down that is also shown in the daily chart gold is bounded by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom creating a triangle pattern there is no Q trade setup on gold right now for swing trading it is resting right on top of the memory support line probably the path of least resistance from here is upward at least enough to allow one to take a day trade in the long direction if any of you are day trading then you may keep an eye on gold and use Q fine tune chart to see if there is any low risk long trade opportunity probably using early range breakout technique because it is resting right on top of memory support memory we are not going to think of any day trade in the short direction and there is no swing trade entry opportunity right now after commodity study let's move to broad market analysis every week we study market breadth using nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index weekly charts because this analysis is using broad indices and weekly charts it is to be used only for long-term investment decisions not for swing trading so much and certainly not for day trading the weekly chart shows that nasdaq went up for two successive weeks previous week's gain was much more than this week's gain still this week's gain was enough to turn the weekly candle color bullish that is green on the other hand nyse went up on a closing basis but very marginally and it closed below last week's high the candle color couldn't turn yellow it remained red that is bearish in terms of internals we see that new high low for both nasdaq and nyse actually declined in the past when the indices were going up new high low for both the indices were going up with that now we see that nasdaq recovered considerably nyse recovered about half of the previous decline however the new high lows are much lower than peaks made earlier this is unlike the other internals the advance decline for both nasdaq and nyse surpassed previous peaks and up down volume also went up up down volume strength is in between that of new high lows and advanced declines what does it show it shows that the market recovered however the recovery was not led by new high lows it was more broad based due to many more stocks going up than going down in nasdaq the up move was more forceful with more volume in nyac the up move was muted in terms of volume this picture is neither very bullish nor very bearish 
it is somewhere in the middle so we may wait for a clearer signal to see whether the broad market is going to go up or go down in last market roundup based on the data i concluded that it may not be an easy v-shape recovery as it had been in the past so far that is coming true though based on friday's move it seems more likely that the market will go up at least for the initial period of next week on market breadth in summary we can say that the indices are clearly bullish in the longer term weekly interval the internals are also strong this week though not as strong as it had been in the past we'll have a similar picture when we study the broad market etfs let's move to that now we are looking at spy snp 500 etf using at a glance template just like we saw in case of nyac broad market index spy also recovered for two successive weeks however the recovery was not enough to turn the weekly candle color to neutral it remained bearish magenta and this week's close was below last week's high it couldn't go above previous week's high this week from monday to thursday all the daily candles had upper tails showing that the bears were able to push price down by the end of the day that changed on friday there was a memory resistance line here that was broken by friday's bullish shape candle friday's candle also turned cyan that is bullish however overall we have to say that the daily candles moved sideways this week as the weekly candle color is still magenta we are not going to think of any go with flow long trade setup in spy right now if we want to take a trade in the long direction in any of the broad market etfs QQQ will be the best choice for that. Here is QQQ using same at a glance template. This is the broad market ETF that changed color to bullish color in the weekly chart. And this week's candle could close above previous week's high. In the daily chart, it made a recent low we can say and on friday it went up as the weekly candle color is now cyan bullish and friday's price closed above the watermark resistance level it is probably more likely that it will continue the up move next week probably surpassing previous that is all time high so there may be a low risk swing long or day trade long opportunity in qqq as there was bearish headwind earlier at this price level if we take a long trade we may be cautious and watch out for this price level probably book some profit at that time relative performance is showing that qqq is stronger than SPY, clearly stronger, which is unlike DIA. This is DIA, Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF. Relative performance in the weekly chart is tilting down, showing that it is weaker than SPY. The recent candle patterns are very similar to that of SPY. In weekly, it recovered for two successive weeks. However, this week's candle color remained magenta, bearish, and it couldn't close above previous week's high. In daily, just like as was in SPY, 
from Monday to Thursday the candles had upper tail there was a memory resistance line on Friday price broke above that Friday's candle shape and color both turned bullish again because the weekly candle color is still magenta this may not be the best ETF to take long right now what about IWM IWM also recovered this way it couldn't close above last week's high though the high of this week was above previous week's high on a closing basis it closed below previous week's high weekly candle color could turn bullish in the daily chart it effectively moved sideways on Friday it couldn't break above the peak of the week's candles on Friday relative performance tilted down because in the daily chart it couldn't make a recent low and go up we are not going to think of taking any long trade in IWM as well if we now combine the market breadth analysis with this broad market ETFs analysis we see that the direction of the market is not clear other than the technology stocks the QQQ index all the other ETFs as well as broad market indices and internals are showing some degree of indecision market went up but not with as high momentum as it went up in the previous week we will be able to see the similar pattern in sector and industry analysis as well whatever be the market state using Q tools top down or bottom up approach we are able to find low risk trade opportunities in both directions long and short as we will identify in this week's session as well sector performance analysis every week we study 11 sectors across three review periods the red bar represents performance of this week green bar that of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar two weeks prior to that of green bar together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance any bar on the right of the zero line indicates the sector went up and any bar to the left side indicates the sector went down the market went up this week however it was subdued compared to the previous week previous week all the 11 sectors went up however this week 7 sectors went up not all the 11 real estate ended in break even and telecom consumer staples healthcare they went down information technology gained for two successive weeks last week it gained the most that's the longest green bar and this week also information technology gained the most the longest red bar here again we see that though infotech gained for two weeks the best performer in both the weeks this week's gain is much smaller about 1.9 percentage compared to previous weeks 5.9 percentage gain here it is the strongest sector however many of the stocks in this sector are overvalued you may be cautious about taking long position new long position or adding to existing long position in these stocks if they are overvalued fundamentally then you may be cautious though the market went up for two successive weeks over one month period all the sectors are down and some are down considerably 
energy is the worst performer down by more than 12 percent in last one month consumer staples and real estates are down by seven and five percent respectively in the same one month period however when some sector or industry is down and down for a long time that is the time we start to look for low risk long opportunities in the last week's market roundup I showed that energy was starting to accelerate. The acceleration was there on one day period. It was not there yet over five days period. But we started looking for buying opportunities. That was timely. Several energy industries went up and gave profitable low risk long trades. You could identify these trades using top down or bottom up analysis. Q system signaled few more long setups as of Friday's close and some could be taken during the week and probably closed by Friday. I shared one trade setup in an energy sector company as of Friday's close. Let us have a look at that. I shared the idea on Conoco Phillips as possible trend following by setup. I started analyzing it just before market close. We need only 10 minutes or 15 minutes to use Q systems to identify low risk trade opportunities as I could do with Conoco Phillips on Friday. I will look at the chart on live system. Okay, I'm not able to click and magnify them. Okay, so let's look at Conoco Phillips through Q Live system and explain what was the basis of identifying this long trend. It was more based on technicals than on fundamentals. Every time we open Q Edge, it analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day periods. 5 days is the primary period for deciding swing as well as long term investment entry. For each of the periods, QH assigns scores. 1 to the worst performer and 11 to the best performer then applies a heat map magenta to the worst one 11 to the best one and a color gradient to all the ones in between energy's score over five days period now turned cyan and its acceleration also turned cyan over five days Last week when we looked at the same table, we saw that it was starting to accelerate over one day period here. Base one day column was turning cyan and now it strengthened further. The five days column turned cyan for acceleration and also the score itself turned cyan. We could drill down to the underlying industries, sort them from weakest to strongest. Oil and gas exploration and production is one that was weak earlier turned cyan over 10 days, 5 days and holding the strength over 2 days and 1 day periods. We could drill down to the underlying stocks. Key wage will go to Thomson Reuters icon that is Metastock Zenith and retrieve the stocks. Once it retrieves the stocks, the 50 stocks that it has found, we can click the calculator button to get detailed data on these 50 stocks and calculate vital statistics. Conoco Phillips COP is a stock that is neither overvalued nor undervalued. It's in the middle yellow color in relative value column. I went to scorecard refresh the data if we go to the growth panel okay this is the growth panel 
from the growth panel we can see that conco philips earnings that is eps growth and revenue growth in recent quarters is turning green revenue growth over one year has also turned green earnings growth over one year is not green yet but all the quarterly periods are showing accelerating growth so here fundamentally we have a stock that is in the middle in terms of valuation growth is accelerating and it pays a dividend of two percent not bad not excellent but not too bad and it has good earnings quality so i thought that it could be a potential buy opportunity and looked it up on q charts on q charts we have very clear buy signal it dropped after the previous earnings went below the watermark levels and then reversed this week it went up very strongly the weekly candle shape and color both turned bullish in daily it made a recent low and went up strongly on friday so we could take a long trade in cop on friday itself probably somewhere in the middle of this candle put stop just below recent low and book profit once there is distance is covered or near the upper boundary this trade could be identified using q sonar also in q sonar here i am using q elite for trade station we could insert a number of symbols and if any of the symbols has any q trade setup it will show up like conoco philips is showing cyan color on gwf that is go with flow column that is also another way that you could identify the potential long trade and then look up its fundamentals using q vital and industry strength using q edge that would be bottom up approach in either way you could identify the potential long entry in about 10 to 15 minutes or less conoco philips is one of the stocks in energy sector that are giving potential long setups now we may identify more of them by top down or bottom up analysis from sector analysis we move to industry analysis now we are looking at the 10 best performing industries of this week if you remember last week's roundup you know that wireless communications was one that was accelerating one week ago we keep an eye on accelerating industries because they tend to be best performing industries in subsequent weeks that happened again this week with wireless telecom services and we discussed this stock telephone data systems tds it had given a box long trade setup on 15th feb we discussed this setup in last round up it was and still is optimally valued in vital scorecard the industry was accelerating all the forces were aligned with tds to give a highest probability trade in the long side tds went up further this week by 8.9 percentage again using the 360 degrees analysis fundamental technical as well as industry analysis we could identify a trend at the right time and profit from it as a whole the industry went up by 5.9 percent previous week that's when it was starting to accelerate it and it went up by another 6.9 percent this week we already went through tds in last market roundup in detail so we will not go through it again you may look up its charts and see how it moved 
further up this week. By the way, all the best performing industries of this week were gainers in the previous week as well, showing that they are continuing their momentum. Another industry in this list is oil and gas drilling. This also belongs to energy sector, a sector where we started looking for possible long from last week itself. This industry, oil and gas drilling, also accelerated along with the sector and turned Cyan bullish in the industry score. One stock in this industry, Unit Cop, UNT, went up by 9.2% this week. Very significant gain. UNT had given a bounce long trade setup on 14th Feb. It also had and still has a short squeeze score. Let's go back to QH. Start with the industry, oil and gas drilling. Drill down into its stocks, identify unit cop and then identify the bounce long trade setup on 14th Feb. The more we look at these charts, study them, combine them, with fundamental strength of the stock and industry strength, when the next opportunity comes, we will be more confident to take. In QH, to identify the strongest industries, we sort over the primary 5 days column, largest to smallest. Oil and gas drilling is one such industry, the second best performer this week. It was very weak earlier. Over one month, it still has a low score of 4. Over 10 days, it improved. Over 5 days, it improved further. That showed up as acceleration over 5 days. Paste column, cyan color here. And it is holding the strength over 2 days and 1 day period. We can drill down by clicking this button. Once the stocks are retrieved, we click the calculator button to gather data on the stocks and calculate vital statistics. UNT is one stock, unit cop, that immediately catches the eye. It has optimal valuation, cyan color, both in terms of relative as well as internal valuation scores. It also has a short squeeze potential, that is there is significant short holdings. If the stock continues to go up, the shorts will start to cover and that may add to the rally. Let's look at the chart for unit cop. In the weekly chart, unit cop dropped for 2 weeks. One week ago, it stabilized. And this week it went up. Earnings was also this week. In the daily chart, it dropped sharply from the top. It hit a pre-existing memory support line here. This candle sharply went up after hitting the memory support line. That could be a bounce long trade setup if the closing price was above the closing price of previous day. But that was not true. So we would wait for one more day. Next day's candle shape was indecisive. So we will wait further. Next day again closing price was lower than previous day. So we will again wait. And on this candle price opened below the memory support line but went up and closed with a bullish shape candle. It also had a bull release signal. Price closed above the white direction line. Because price dropped sharply to pre-existing memory line with heavy activity and now on this candle went up. We could take a bounce long trade setup at the close of this candle. 
as it had earnings for swing traders it may be more appropriate to trade using short put verticals that would be very profitable long term investors might take a long position before earnings as well subject to their own further study of the stocks business right now it is already up somewhat from the recent low so we are not going to take any long trade right now if it pulls back little bit and goes up again that may give us the first go with flow long trade opportunity after this decline one thing to note when we took the bounce long trade setup the weekly candle color was still magenta it was neither neutral yellow nor bullish cyan that is fine bounce is the only trade setup meant for exhausting markets where a stock drops suddenly and significantly hits pre existing support and goes up from there for this setup we don't need to look at the weekly candle color because this is a very fast reversal setup based on exhaustion it works very well as does the other q trade setups we saw two stocks in energy sector one where we could already book some profit and one which gave a long signal on friday there are probably other stocks in energy sector that may give long opportunities again we see that when the energy sector was very much down everybody was probably scared we could use the acceleration and the reversal signal on the charts to take very low risk long trades right at the bottom in case of event right at the bottom in case of conoco philips is the first go with flow long trade setup if we look back to the sector table we see that utility sector is one that was weak for long time it accelerated both over one day two days as well as five days periods five day score is not cyan yet however two days and one day score has turned cyan in fact on friday it has the best score one of the utilities industry that is independent power and renewable electricity producers is among the best performing industries this week you may watch out for a possible turn around for this industry it was weak for long time languishing along with the sector but now it is showing acceleration one stock aes corp aes is the ticker symbol it pays a nice dividend 4.9% is optimally valued and it gave a bounce long setup with false downside breakout on 9th feb that trade could catch the very bottom of the stock and it may be possible to take a low risk entry next week as well let's again go back to qa drill down from sector to industry to stock and finally look at the stock using q charts we saw that utilities already started to accelerate we can drill down to the underlying industries independent power and renewable electricity producer it was weak earlier very nicely gradually turning cyan also showing acceleration over the primary 5 days period this is the pattern i like to see when taking long trades that are able to catch almost the very or the very bottom of the stock that is they are able to catch the exact turning point of the industry and if it continues to go up we will have more go with flow long trade opportunities along the way at the turning around point the opportunities may be more reversal trades like bounce box or headwind trades 
likewise in this case it has retrieved eight stocks clicking the calculator button will retrieve data on the stocks and calculate vital statistics AES is a stock that again immediately catches our eye it has the best possible valuation score in this group of stocks pays a nice dividend almost 5% that caught my eye so I looked up the chart AES dropped some time ago when the market was dropping it dropped sharply with that remember these two weeks market also dropped sharply and it recovered for two weeks as the market also recovered in the daily chart price went below this watermark support level and then went up we could start taking a long trade on this candle itself why this candle because this is the candle that went back I think above this watermark support line on the weekly chart let's confirm that change this to weekly interval first draw a horizontal line and change it back to daily interval we see how beautifully it dropped sharply in fact after displaying a bearish headwind signal that could catch the very top it could give a very profitable short trades using the bearish headwind signal at which point the price was close to the watermark resistance level in the weekly chart in daily at that time it created a lower double bottom but with a lower second top that was very profitable trade looking at this area we see that this candle after heavy exhaustion down move where price hit the deep watermark level it bounced back up that would give us a very low risk bounce long trade setup in this case the support was not from memory support line but from deep watermark support line bounce trade setup is applicable if we have support lines which can be either deep watermark here it is deep from the peak or a memory support so this was a valid bounce long trade setup we could take the trade at this point stop just below recent low and book profit once the risk distance is covered and hold on to the remaining position trying to let profit run as the industry seems to be turning around and the stock is optimally valued I think there would not be any reason to exit full position but half position or one third position may be held trying to let profit run and using trailing stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from the point we book our partial profit this was again another case where using Q edge we could attempt to catch the exact turning point of an industry and stocks in that industry let's now move to worst performing industries earlier one week we had not enough best performing industries not even 10 were above zero then we didn't have enough worst performing industries not even 10 below zero this week is mixed that also shows that the momentum is slowing down worst performing industries are down by between 3.4 to 7.6 percent in the previous week the same industries were all up by between 3.7 to 5.2 in the 5.2 percentages similar percentages they declined by percentages by which they gained one week ago and over one month all of these are down by between 2.6 
to 6.5 percent. This flip-flop shows uncertainty in these industries. When studying the best performing industries, we saw that all of them continued their upward momentum. And when looking at the worst performing industries, we are seeing that they are all flip-flopping. So if we are thinking of taking short trade, these industries will be better suited than the best performing industries. Of course, that's why they are called the worst performing industries this week. But not only because of this week's worst performance, also because of the fact that they are flip-flopping. Aluminium is an industry that was weak for a long time, but now showing signs of weakness. Alcoa gave a go with flow short trade setup on 30th Jan that was very profitable. Another industry, not in this list, but related to metals mining, that is steel, is strong for a long time, but now showing signs of weakness. If you are holding stocks in steel industry, you may be cautious, protect profit using Q protection signal and start looking for shorts. These stocks, ATI, Zeus and TMST are all overvalued. All of them displayed bearish headwind either on weekly or daily charts at the very top. They may not have immediate short setup but because the industry is weakening and these stocks already displayed bearish headwind you may be careful. Protect profit in existing long if you have and look for potential shorts. Let's look at the aluminium and steel industries in QH and drill down to some of these stocks. For identifying the worst performing industries, we sort over the primary 5 days column, smallest to largest. You see aluminium is one of the weakest and steel has a nice pattern, strength earlier, now weakening. It has decelerated over 5 days. The score is certainly very weak for 5 days, 2 days and 1 day period. We are retrieving the stocks in the steel industry. Calculating vital statistics now. We can go to scorecard, refresh the data and sort to get the weakest stocks at the top. We can see ATI, Zeus, TMST. They are all overvalued. At least the top two, ATI and Zeus, are very close to 52 week high. TMST is also not very far from 52 week high. Let's have a quick look at these charts to see how the bearish headwind has come and how we may look for potential shots. In ATI, we had bearish headwind at the very top in weekly as well as daily charts. Those are even more easy signals to take short at the very top. And in this case, we also had a false upside reversal at earnings. It gapped up. Very next day, it went down with bearish signal as well as bearish headwind. Weekly had a bearish shape candle at that time. So using all the signals together, one could probably take a shot right at the very top. Now it is inside triangle pattern. So we will be careful not to take any shot from the midpoint. But if it goes up, hits the memory resistance or the watermark resistance and goes down from there. And if the industry is weakening at the same time, then we may look for potential shot in this stock. For the benefit of time, I will not go through the other two steel industry stocks. You may look at them on your system. Let's look at hypermarkets and super centers. This is the worst performing industry this week, going down by more than 7.5%. We have two stocks in this industry, very well known, Walmart and Costco. Walmart dropped by more than 10% after earnings. 
it is down 15.5 percent from 52 week high and is not overvalued anymore costco is still near 52 week high and it is still overvalued interestingly again both walmart and costco displayed bearish headwind in the weekly charts at the very top illustrating why we are always cautious when the bearish headwind or bullish headwind appears in this case bearish headwind if there is no confirmed trade setup at minimum we protect our profit using q protection signal if we did that we would be able to protect our capital both in costco and walmart costco in fact gave a false upside breakout in daily chart on 31st jan at the level where bearish headwind had come earlier in the daily chart and i keep mentioning if there is a bearish headwind that is able to push price down and then price goes back to the same level it is very likely price will go down again at least enough to give a very quick reversal headwind trade or a, maybe in this case a box trade setup let's look at these two stocks on q charts and see how the bearish headwind could help us protect our capital walmart was going up strongly then at the very top it displayed bearish headwind signal in weekly looking at that we'll apply q protection signal probably on daily charts to protect our profit and when price went down this week we'll probably get stopped out at this price level those who didn't hit the warning from bearish headwind didn't put a protective stop ended up with a much bigger drawdown as this drop was very large after earnings it dropped significantly because it has dropped already about 15 percent from the 52 week high it is not overvalued anymore whereas costco very similar company which one do you like more costco or walmart this is costco also displayed a bearish headwind at the very top so we could start thinking about protecting our capital position in this stock in daily it displayed a bearish headwind at this level price came down then price recovered to the same level on this candle it completed a false upside breakout so we could take a shot right at the close of this candle with stop just above recent high that would be a box trade setup using false upside breakout at a price level where bearish headwind came earlier and from where price fell down that would be a very profitable short trade right now it is inside triangle pattern so we are not going to take any short trade we may wait for price to go to the memory resistance till down from this area or go to the watermark here or maybe the watermark here and till down from here and look for low risk short opportunity in this way by creating a watch list of stocks where we may take long where we may take short we are ready ahead of time and when the signal comes we can confidently take the trade sometimes we can use fine tune chart to take the trade before the days close as well every week we study accelerating industries because they tend to be best performing industries in subsequent weeks we saw first hand example of that again this week in wireless wireless telecom services which was accelerating last week and is the best performer this week and now we see this industry integrated oil and gas it was weak for a long time we'll soon go to qh to see this industry had magenta score for a long time in qh now turning cyan and two very well-known companies chevron and exxon mobil very similar stocks i found both pay about four percent dividend both just completed false downside breakout in weekly charts 
both of these stocks have improving earnings as well as revenue growth. So both of them are very similar in terms of fundamental, in terms of dividend. Even the charts are similar in a way, both of them completed false downside breakout. They may give low risk buy opportunities. Let's have a look at QH and drill down. For identifying the accelerating stocks, we sort over past five days, largest to smallest. Integrated oil and gas is one that was clearly weak for a long time. This is the third energy industry we are studying now in today's session for potential long trades. Again, illustrating that we are able to catch the exact turning point of the sector and underlying industries. Beautifully, it is turning from magenta to cyan. We can drill down. We have Chevron and ExxonMobil, CVX and XOM. Both pay about 4% dividend. Both are near 52 week low. CVX is about 9% above 50 rupees low and ExxonMobil is about 5% above 50 rupees low. Because the industry was weak for a long time, it is expected that the stocks will be at a lower level. They pay nice dividends. We see Chevron's earning quality is actually better. So in terms of fundamental, we see Chevron is better than ExxonMobil. Dividend is one cent higher. But more importantly, its scores, valuation scores are better. And earnings quality is also better for Chevron than ExxonMobil. Though in terms of market name collection, ExxonMobil may be more well known worldwide than Chevron. So we rely on data more. So we'll have to conclude that if we are going to take long trade in one of these based on fundamentals, we'll choose Chevron. Let's look at the charts. Chevron dropped heavily, came below this watermark support and went back above that. This week's candle shape was bullish. So it completed a false downside breakout in weekly along with exhaustion. In daily, we see that it came to this level around 111, 111. Weekly watermark would be somewhere here and on Friday closed above that with a bullish shape candle and also bullish color, green color candle. We also see a bullish headwind had come earlier. Looking at this, one might consider taking a low risk entry long side on Chevron, putting stop just below recent low, which is also supported by a memory support line. It may be considered as a bounce long trade setup, a delayed bounce long setup. If the decline happened here sharply, then again retested the bottom, made a false downside breakout and on Friday it went up. I think Chevron may be an opportunity for long. Also pays nice dividend. What about ExxonMobil? ExxonMobil has a similar chart, dropped sharply, hit the watermark support level, went below that and recovered. This week closed above watermark support with bullish shape candle. It had exertion earlier. The watermark was around 76, so at around this price level. Very similar to Chevron, on Friday it closed above the watermark that was there in the weekly chart. That is still there in the weekly with the bullish shape candle, bullish color candle. So this also may give a long trade opportunity, a bounce long trade opportunity from this deep watermark level. Sharp drop here, try to go up, try to make a double bottom and go up again. So if we take a long trade here on Friday's close, stop will be just below recent low. Very similar in terms of fundamentals, very similar in terms of charts as well.
yet another energy sector stock where we are considering taking long position at the time the sector its industry and the stocks are turning around let's look at the decelerating industries steel industry decelerated we already discussed several steel stocks ati zeus and tmst these are all overvalued none of them have short setup right now but if the industry continues to weaken you may look for potential short in these stocks why these stocks because they are also overvalued in terms of fundamentals if you have long position you may book profit or protect profit using stock not in this list this list is giving us the 10 worst decelerating industries though not in this list we can easily identify from qa and we'll shortly do that aerospace and defense is an industry that decelerated across all the review periods five days two days and one day it's not usual to see that usually we see deceleration over one day first then over two days then over five days here we are seeing deceleration across all the three periods meaning it is continuing to go down and going down faster and faster this industry has at least eight stocks that are fundamentally overvalued so we may create a short list of them and watch for potential shots action enterprise aa action and cubic co are in this overvalued category their earnings growth slowed down both are at pendulum high on q charts there is no short setup yet However, if the industry weakens, they may give shorting the top opportunities. Let's look at QH and drill down, drill down from industry to stocks. For finding the decelerating industries, we sort over pace five days column, smallest to largest. We see steel is one industry that is beautifully decelerating, also turned bearish over five days period another one is not among the worst 10 decelerating industries but still decelerating and it caught my eye because it was very nice cyan color for a long time and now gradually smoothly turning magenta it has deceleration across all the time periods you see on this display screen this is the only industry which is showing deceleration across all the three periods it is not usual to find that so that caught my eye I drill down this industry has many stops clicking calculator will retrieve the data on these stocks and calculate vital statistics let's go to scorecard refresh short by relative value and we see Exxon, AAXN is one of the weakest in terms of valuation and CUB, cubic is also one of the weakest. AAXN is very close to 52 week high, 1.41 percentage below 52 week high and CUB is 5 percent, about 5 percent below 52 week high. So if we are having long position in these stocks and holding them for a while we have very significant profit the industry was going up the stocks were going up strongly now the industry is decelerating sharply and the stocks aaxn and cub are overvalued so it may be time to start booking profit or protect profit using stock let's look at the charts this is aaxn It has a very deep watermark level. Price has pierced above that one week ago, and this week it has an indecisive candle in terms of shape. If it goes below the watermark resistance, then it will complete a false upside breakout. Any long position holder may be cautious. At the same time, it will probably complete a false upside breakout in daily chart no trade signal yet 
but it may come if the industry continues to weaken. Other than AXM, the second stock in aerospace and defense, the second stock that is fundamental overvalue is cubic, C-U-B. It dropped after displaying a bearish headwind in the weekly chart. Now it recovered, couldn't go to the previous high in the daily chart. The daily candle color has turned yellow, that is neutral. If it drops from here, and if we have confirming color in the weekly, we may be able to take a go with flow short trade. That completes the regular study. Let's summarize. This week market went up, though it went up by much smaller percentage than one week ago. Prior to that, for two weeks, market dropped heavily. Therefore, over four weeks period, market is still down. In the last market roundup, I thought that it may not be an easy V-shape recovery this time as it was earlier. That was based on studying the sector and industry's performance. So far that came true, that analysis came true. This week mostly moved sideways. However, on Friday, all the broad market ETFs went up. QQQ was the strongest. It seems likely that QQQ will go up to hit previous peak that was all time high. However, because market is near or at all time high, it may not be the time to start loading up on new long positions. If we have long positions, we do not need to exit them. If they are profitable, we can put trailing stock to try to let profit run. At the same time, we may start looking for long position in industries that were weak earlier. We identified several such stocks, many of them in energy sector and also look for potential shorts in industries that are decelerating, becoming weak and in stocks in those industries that are overvalued. There are always opportunities in the market that we can identify using Q systems. The top-down approach that we cover in the market roundups or the bottom-up approach that we can carry out using Q Sonar. By the way, next week there is a live event in Indonesia, Jakarta, Metastock event. They invited me. So I will be there on Saturday. Therefore, next week, Saturday, we will not have the live session. During the weekend next week, sometime I will record the video and publish on the YouTube channel. If you are following the Superior Profit channel, you will be notified once the video is uploaded. Our next live session will be on 10th March. 3rd March, I will make the video but we will not have the live session. 3rd March, no live session, I will publish the video. 10th March, we will have our next live session. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thanks to all of you for joining. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.